Hi, and welcome to another session on deviation from ideal mental health. In this session, we'll take a look at the big issue of culture bias in ideal mental health, which will come across quite a few times in your course, since it's one of your big key issues and debates. So let's start with the task. Have a read of this statement on the screen and pause the video for a couple of minutes while you decide how much you agree or disagree. Now, hopefully you were able to give that some thought and recognise that actually we come across some barriers and culture bias when trying to decide what is ideal mental health. And here are a few things to consider about culture bias as you move forward on your course. So firstly, culture bias occurs when a researcher, maybe even unknowingly, assumes that their own culture may, is dominant and superior to others. Secondly, culture bias happens when researchers impose their ethics onto other cultures. In other words, when a researcher views other cultures from the perspective of their own, for example. And then lastly, and perhaps a consequence of culture bias, is the misjudgment that can occur as a result of being culturally ignorant and culture bias. So a couple of key things to bear in mind when we're discussing culture bias. So let's revisit personal autonomy criteria. So firstly, recap the definition and then suggest examples of where this is not considered ideal in other cultures. Pause the video for a couple of minutes while you complete the task. So you can see a summary of personal autonomy on the screen and hopefully you have something similar, but let's focus on some suggestions where culture impacts views on autonomy. So firstly, arranged marriages in Asia and other places. And secondly, in collectivist cultures, where the focus is on depending on each other, working together rather than independently. So two examples there where personal autonomy, as depicted by Jehoda, just wouldn't be appropriate to describe ideal mental health across the world. But let's try that again. So pause the video for 10 minutes, write a summary of what self-actualisation means and refers to, and suggest examples of where self-actualisation differs across the cultures. And again, you could use multiple resources to do this. So again, the summary is on the screen. So self-actualisation refers to a person's ability to be content with themselves for ideal mental health, an individual should be able to visualise and reach their potential. And then there's an example on the screen. Hopefully you found some that you could use yourself, but if not, you could pause the video and take a note of this one. So Blackfoot Native Americans in Canada place self-actualisation at the lowest part of human development, believing that this must happen first in order for people to then focus on the success of their community. So whereas self-actualisation in Western cultures is one of the big goals that comes after several other things, for Blackfoot Native Americans, it's one of the first things that must be achieved. So even just that one example tells us that when defining what is abnormal, cultural traditions and practices, they really, really do matter. Let's move towards your writing skills then. And now you can see on your screen an image of the single Whopper Burger, which is a great writing frame from Tutor to You for structuring your AO3 and for warming up to those more complex AO3 skills. So remember the point, the elaboration and the explanation. And for this task, use your knowledge of cultural differences to write an appropriate evaluation paragraph. So pause the video now for five to 10 minutes while you fulfill each of the parts of the writing frame. So let's finish this session by taking a look at how one of the points could be developed. So one limitation of the ideal mental health definition of abnormality is that some of the criteria are culture bias. So we've got a clear point and we're clearly highlighting to the examiner or to the marker that we're talking about a limitation, that we are in the AO3 zone. This means that some of the criteria proposed by Jehoda is not applicable to all cultures. For example, one criteria is personal autonomy. However, there are parts of the world where dependence on others is actually valued and considered normal and ideal in terms of mental health. So to complement the point, we've added some elaboration and we've given an example as well, a relevant example to really demonstrate the, the knowledge and understanding. 
This is a limitation because it means the ideal mental health is not a universal way of defining abnormality. And unless culture is taken into consideration, many people will be judged to be abnormal when they're not. So we're finishing off with an explanation of why this is a limitation and what the consequence is. So all in all, the single Whopper Burger template is going to give you a nice, structured, elaborate paragraph. Mm -hmm.